Hello, everyone. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Um, Steve here from Campin' with Steve. Um, how does that look? Can I? Oh, I've turned off and I've turned on the volume. So, okay. Right on. Uh, we're just going to wait for people to show up and get here. I've got an agenda of stuff today. Uh, look how organized I am today. So, with everybody showing up, um, awesome. We'll just go over a few things right away because these live streams, uh, they get pretty hectic. Things go pretty fast. So I'm going to be able to see what I can. Uh, there is slow mode on. So what's going to end up happening there is uh, you can send one message every like minute and then you can send another one. It's a little irritating. However, um, some people have ruined it because they'll sit there and do like 50 messages in a row and spam stuff. So uh, very first thing. Let's keep this friendly. Let's keep this fun. Let's keep this PG. Um, I don't want to see any politics, uh, news, um, any hockey smack talk. We can keep that civil as possible. Uh, be nice to each other. Uh, we do have some mods out there, so um, they're going to really be uh, cracking down on uh, people that are going to be jerks tonight. So, But we normally don't have that. Uh, most people are just fantastic. I think we've got 2,000 of the coolest people online right now watching a live stream. So welcome uh, to everybody who's got here so far. And um, okay, I think it's about that time. Um, so if you are sitting around and you have something you'd like to enjoy as a beverage, does not need to be an alcoholic related beverage. It could be um, simply anything that, uh, anything that you may want to uh, consume while we sit and hang out before the hockey game. I should take a sip. Mm. Yum. Okay, awesome. So the hockey game is on in an hour. So that is basically the time limit on how long this uh, this is going to go. I'm going to let me just get into my settings here. I'm on the other screen. So I don't know if this is affecting stuff. Um, let me see. Um, turn off. Okay, where are we? Okay, we are returning. So, yeah, good. It didn't stop working. We've got good internet. So, six o'clock, I'm out of here. We've got to watch the game. Edmonton and uh, Colorado are going to duke it out tonight in the second game of the Western Finals. And I do follow hockey when the um, Oilers are in a playoff. So, uh, thank you to all the mods here that are helping me out tonight. Uh, I know it was kind of a short notice on a live stream, but um, I haven't done a live stream since the winter, and it's almost almost the end of summer. We got like a couple, couple more weeks left here, so thank you guys. Now, the fun part: where's everybody from tonight? Let's see if, uh, if we can um, give some shout outs to the the coolest, strangest, farthest locations um, from where people are tonight. Let's see. Edmonton. Oh, 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 there we go. That's, uh, let's see. I want to see. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, people are from all over the place. I see Scotland in there, Brazil, Romania, uh, Colorado. Uh, made the best team win tonight. Mexico, Quebec. Uh, holy moly. Um, Lithuania, I think I saw in there. Chicago. Uh, so, yes, uh, we got a good representation from around the world tonight. Uh, holy moly. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to like wreck YouTube with the, uh, I don't think it can keep up with these comments because uh, probably breaking the internet right now because I got 3,000 of the coolest people here. So now oh, I'm going to do this because, you know, the last video I did, I didn't get the uh, beer donations onto that. So some of those are time sensitive. And those are things like birthdays, anniversaries, certain congratulations for life events. And I don't know how to use um, computers. I don't have those fancy live streams where it like cuts away to some graphics and then it's like back to me and, you know, I'm getting people's names up highlighted that have commented. I don't know how to do that. But I do know how to scroll some beer donations the old fashioned way. So here's what we've got. I don't know if that's going to show up in reverse or not. But anyways, 
So we've got these shout outs that I printed off. Um, it's not going to go on forever. I've just got the time sensitive things and they will find their way into another video. All right. And let me see. Okay. Man. This is how they had to do things before, uh, before computer graphics. That's old movies when they scroll the credits. Not how, that's how stuff looks. Oh, yeah. Ah. And, okay, there's like two or three more pages to go here. Okay. Here we are. And looks like there's a couple of, a couple of people that have uh, become doctors here. So congratulations to those folks who have become doctors. And so happy birthday, happy anniversary, and congratulations on graduating, everybody. And uh, so got all that stuff out of the way. And uh, yeah, so where are we? I'll, I will do some questions in a bit, the ones I can get to. <clears throat> but um, of course, why are we here uh, instead of stealth camping? Basically, there's a trend. If you see me back home and if you see the acreage, the treehouse, um, get ready for some disappointment videos because um, I have... I'm at the point like scraping the bottom of the barrel for anything stealthy or interesting around here. At the beginning, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, there was a million and one places to go. And now I find that I'm spending actually days on end to like see if I can find a spot to go stealth camping. And I do get a lot of suggestions and I do appreciate those. Um, a lot of them though locally seem to be either full on trespassing or just such a good spot that it's no challenge to it whatsoever, you know, like way in the woods somewhere. So that's why I'm here today. And uh, we're doing a live stream because I didn't want to leave everybody hanging. And I wanted to get all these uh, shout out things done, etc. So we've got um, merch, merch issues. Um, I've been using two merch companies now. And we had problems I'm not going to throw these guys under the bus, but there's been quality issues. And then there's been customer service issues with the first company I was using. So I went to seek out a second company and it looked really good. They were communicating with me really good. And um, I've ordered some sample merch. And the problem is the quality is fine. The customer service seems there, but the shipping is out of this world. So this is basically the piece of merch I've been dying to have for years now. Simple little beer koozie. The type they give away at sporting events, the type that costs 50 cents to produce, to mass produce. I could get a bunch of these, um, but then I'd have to be mailing them out. I'd be like at the post office every week, but I really want to, uh, to get these products. So I'm trying to find a company that does these and we'll mail out shirts and everything and, and kind of make them on demand. So if anybody has suggestions or knows of, or has heard of what a really good merch company is that integrates with YouTube, um, I'm all ears because I will move the company over. Like the problem with these is every one of these beer koozies, these, these ones that you could stick in an envelope and like mail anywhere in the world for a buck, $10 shipping per, I ordered three of these and it costs me $60 to get three of these to my house. And that's unacceptable because I was paying like $10 for this beer koozie, then another like $9.99 for shipping it here. And I ordered three of them. They couldn't ship them all at once. They had to ship them all individually for $10 each. So um, anyway, it's not for a lack of trying. I've really been trying to get this stuff out for like a year now because I think it's a really cool piece of merch. But it's on hold for now. So that's where we are. Now, uh, Ian has mentioned to, to find a local place maybe for the merch. Um, I've been looking for like a fulfillment company, a local fulfillment company that can ship worldwide. Um, and if they could... Uh, you know, if they could integrate with a merch shelf on YouTube, all the better. But if not, 
I'm just, I want to have good quality merch out there that isn't a rip off that uh, is just kind of affordable because, you know, as a content creator, when I put up merch, I do make some money on the merch, but this beer koozie that I paid $20 for, I made less than $2 in like a commission for selling this. So it was like, they, the company told me that it costs that, you know, that $8 is like what it costs to produce this. So I don't know. I'm not in the business, but I did find other places that'll print these for like 50 cents a piece. Anyhow, <clears throat> enough of that merch stuff. So, um, we are going to be heading off, uh, traveling cause I just have to get away from here. Uh, every time I'm here, I'm just ransacking my channel, um, by not keeping things as lively and fresh as they should be. So I'm not going to sit here apologizing all evening. However, um, we're, we're hitting the road soon. That uh, has to be done. Uh, so I'm going to zip in and see some of these uh, comments, questions. Um, uh, let's see. What are we got? Oh, yes, we are almost at 4,000 people watching. I don't normally keep track of that because that would just give me stage fright to make me nervous um, to be here. Like if I was physically in front of 4,000 people right now. I would be having a panic attack. So maybe I'll just put a piece of tape over that number so I don't have to see it. Um, let's see. What are we got? Okay. Uh, questions, questions, questions. How is Garbage the Cat? Well, I can answer that question for you right now. Hey, Garbage. Okay. So here's Garbage the Cat. Um, Say hello to the world. There's like 4,000 people there. He's uh, we got a little tag for him. He's he's been all checked out at the vet. He's a pretty good, high quality kitty. He want to be on a live stream, but uh, garbage is doing good. Uh, we're trying to fatten him up a little bit because he seems a little thin and bony. So we're getting uh, we're getting some food there for him. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's cat fur flying everywhere. Good thing it's not in 4K. It would look uh, horrible. So uh, let's see. Jackson asks, hey, Steve, where do you think you'll travel for the next set of videos? Now, I don't want to give out spoilers or ideas. I've had one plan for video for like three years now. And it's a specific one. It's a stealth one. And it has been suggested a couple of times. But this is, aside from like, Area 51, it's the holy grail of stealth, but I'm not going to say what it is. However, I'll say I will go to Southern Alberta to film that one. So I will be going to Southern Alberta for, um, uh, try to film a couple of ones out there and meet up with some friends along the way. Oh, cat fur everywhere. Holy. Um, let's see. Stealth camping on Bowen Island. Um, that is, uh, it's not on my, my list of stuff that I've been, uh, thinking of doing but it's something that you know i i don't mind stealth camping anywhere oh this cat I'm gonna sneeze in front of like four thousand people here so okay 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 there we go and I, I without without picking favorites here i'm just kind of picking questions as they as they come through and uh it's just kind of randomly uh the ones that i can see so let's see Sheila asks, what's the furthest south you've been in the United States? This is not an impressive answer. I think we went through like Michigan once and that was like it. We were like taking a shortcut uh, to go across the country. So I, I really would like to. Um, Beautiful Wife is not incredibly interested in snakes. Um, so any of the states with the more lethal constrictor type snakes or, you know, even garter snakes are not going to be uh, a good situation there. So um, I might have to do a little, uh, a little uh, shout out there to, or I'm going to do, I got people texting me, one of my mods. Um, okay. What has he said? Um, I'm going to find somebody to add here as a mod. And um, yeah, shout out to Abby, who's uh, a mod and he's really helping me out with this social media stuff. So 
can I find participants? Oh my, okay. That's, uh, I've, I've done not a ton of live streams, so it's still kind of a, a, learn, a major learning experience for me. Um, anyway, uh, okay, uh, message to Abby who's watching this. Um, I don't have time, I can't figure this out right now during the live stream on how to add stuff. So I will, I will trust that in your, your hands. Anyhow, so uh, let me see. Yeah, there's one. This My Garage uh, says, hi, um, from Tim and Angie. Hello, Tim and Angie. Uh, any chance of putting up the electric bear fence uh, for night camping? Yes. Uh, we've still got that. And <clears throat> what I'm planning is a trip out to that same kind of grizzly country we're in. And we're going to go nuts with uh, all the, the bear protective stuff, like the paranoid level nuts of having, you know, a big light tower and sirens or like train whistlers, anything is going to scare those bears and an electric fence. Um, but the fact that it's overkill uh, will be like the joke of the video, but it'll also be to kind of show the different options that people do have because there's all types of these contraptions that, you know, motion lights that go into the woods and then they'll set off a little siren or something. If something moves, I think that would probably just terrorize you because um, every little squirrel that you're going to think is a bear or something like that. So that's the way those things work. Um, so, yes, uh, I got off on a, a tangent there about bears, uh, but there are no shortage of bears around here. So, okay, Jake Farrell has asked, Steve, are you planning another river float this summer? We are trying to look at river options right now. Um, the boat does need some work, but these projects that I love doing so much, they take a lot of time. And like the boat trips are like a week long thing of filming. And then usually several weeks of getting stuff, modifying the boat, building it, driving there. So if I can find a decent river that's not as low as the river that we were on, I have more of a chance of putting the boat as is without a ton of work on it. So that boat uh, will, It'll see some water this summer, whether that will be an extension, probably not an extension of the river that we've been doing uh, over the years, because that gets really shallow on a big section. So there will be a river adventure of some kind um, or a lake adventure, or there always has to be. That's the one thing that we like doing uh, the, the very most. Let's see. It looks like Abby, I think Abby had asked about thermocell and if it's the best, in my opinion, the best mosquito repellents that I've found is um, thermocells. Hands down, no questions asked. Uh, it it works really quick, and it's <clears throat> the the chemical in those thermocells. It's actually uh, desis alethrin is the name of the chemical that it comes out of those little portable units. Um, and that's the same as the, in those green mosquito coils. So it's the exact same thing in those green mosquito coils, except it's like a hundred times the potency. Uh, so it's like a lot more. You theoretically, hey, garbage, you theoretically could uh, light up, you know, 100 mosquito coils or just chuck them right in the campfire and it would do the same thing. But yeah, thermocells, you can like, this sounds horrible. Uh, it makes me sound twisted, but I can literally watch the mosquitoes dropping out of the sky and twitching on the ground. I don't know if that's good to inhale for myself, but I'll take my chances because we know how mosquitoes uh, are. Oh, great. Here, uh, Famicy has commented thermocell poisonous for cats. I don't know if that's a question or if he's letting me know. Um, but, well, yeah. Well, we'll just have to get a, a kitty sitter or put up with the, the insects. I don't want uh, garbage to get injured. Let's see. Now, I, I get this question asked all the time, so I'm just going to get it out of the way here. Um, wasn't a wasn't the scar in the neck? Wasn't a big violent street fight? I don't know if Sean has uh, heard that from somewhere, but that is not what occurred there. Uh, this was from surgery when I was 18, getting a cyst removed. Uh, this and you know, there's some other facial things. Was from falling down a little bit of a cliff, probably where I got my um, fear of heights from, because uh, I never, uh, I never had that before so let me see um okay 
uh, Daryl P has said with a bunch of <clears throat> graphics, turn on donations. We want to send you monies. Um, I don't think for a channel of this size, um, I want to have an actual like relaxing, sit down. Um, you know, there's enough donations and money that comes through merch that I don't need to turn on every little monetization thing um, that I can find. I'm not going to put the channel memberships. Uh, I, I just basically the the only reason the beer donations are still around is because people like them. And it, that way people can get birthday shout outs and stuff. And it's not too intrusive. Um, but aside from that, I'm, I'm sorry, Daryl, I can't do it uh, because the amount that do come in like donation wise, like if I were to sit here with the super chats on, I would, I would just be basically, I've done it before, like when, it, before I turned them off, it was like, I'm just constantly thanking people, thanking people, thank me. And I don't want to complain about that. It's a, uh, it's, it's a good problem to have, but I don't feel it's fair to the people that are watching um, a live stream that want to sit and have beer with me before the game. Uh, they would much rather, you know, me pick out some random things instead of, uh, instead of just thanking people constantly. So um, that's why we're there. Now, let me see what else I can pick up on. This is, I don't, I don't watch any other channels. You uh, live streams are very, very rarely. I'll stop in on one and see what's going on. But uh, so I don't know how I, most of them work. Uh, I'm just kind of came up with a little format of like, you know, we'll do some introductions, take some questions. Um, and I guess I'm like solidly into the question period here because we've got we got like 40 minutes left. We can hang out here. So I see one. Let's see. Um, Daniel says, I was thinking, question, have you considered a more risky style of camping as close to the home without being seen by anyone, even beautiful wife? I don't know. I, I really don't like... I'm not sure if you're talking about like my actual house, like outside of my house and trying to just not be seen by a beautiful wife. Uh, but I really don't want to freak people out. So I, I try to stay away from people's houses as much as possible. Yeah, sometimes I can't avoid it and they'll be in the background. Yeah, it's a little bit of a risk, but I, I don't want somebody to like look out the window and see a flashlight moving in the woods behind their house. Like that's... One, it'll get me busted, and two, it's going to freak out people like unnecessarily. So being stealthy is uh, is what it's all about. Okay, so here Bill Diaz asked, "How do you deal with ticks?" I have never had a tick issue. Uh, where I am, which is changing, there there are becoming more and more ticks. But generally in Alberta, where I'm camping, we have such brutal winters that there's not a huge tick infestation problem. Uh, secondly, I'm usually like, you never see me in shorts cause I got these little bony pale chicken legs that I don't want to put on YouTube. And, um, then the ticks will latch onto me. So we don't want to do that. And in BC, I also, I, I rarely am bushwhacking, hiking, that type of thing. I will get to a fairly well-traveled place. I'm not going through tall grass or anything like that. So it's, uh, I, I haven't encountered ticks, but I know there are places where, yeah, you've got to have your little tick tweezers and the whole, the whole bit. Um, cause your, your dogs will be covered in them. You'll be covered in them. Um, and the Lyme disease, nothing to joke around with. Um, that's, um, don't thank you, Bill. Uh, that's, that is my answer on the ticks and what's happened, uh, to that. Uh, here, well, I'll just get this out of the way. Carlos, are, are we, are we getting a video today? You're looking at it, Carlos. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is uh, what I could come up with for this week, uh, sadly. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be out filming again tomorrow, likely, um, and or the day after. So I I'm I'm getting ready to get out of town so we can get the next little trip here done. Because yeah, if I'm if I'm in town, I'm just gonna be cobbling together uh, bottom of the barrel routine all looks the same done it before been everywhere to stealth camp here videos and you know i've even done some in the same spots a few times in edmonton uh you know like i've done a hammock one in the very first spot that i stealth camped and i've done that one again um so 
<laughs> Bill, what is wrong with bony pale chicken legs? Well, see, I don't have a problem with my appearance. I'm quite comfortable. My self-esteem is okay. However, I just want to subject people to uh, to my little weird uh, legs, uh, just all hairy and pale. Yeah, no, no. It's uh, we'll uh, we'll get uh, we'll save that for the, uh, <laughs> the more visually appealing YouTubers channels. So, okay, Chris, is the railway linked up to the treehouse yet? Uh, what we're doing right there is I've got, I ordered about 400 feet of this tubing I'm going to be using for the rail. And we found a pretty level spot to, to test it out. I may trestle it up or build it. Like this is strictly like testing. I want to see if this thing's going to fall apart on me before I build a whole bunch of it. But I ordered from Home Depot like 400 feet of this top fence rail and it was scheduled to get delivered and then they said they they didn't have any now the inventory online said they had like 80 in the building and i think they just didn't want to go dig it out of the back so we're gonna have to go scavenge store to store for to get all this rail material and they do have the best price at home depot compared with other places so that's uh i've got the the wheels arriving for that uh this should be in the next day or two and then we'll get an actual little little train um, on a small section of rail. We're probably going to make like a little circular track at first and load it down with a lot of weight, and just send it around and around until something breaks. So we know what the limits on it are. Uh, that's, um, that's the way it goes. Okay. So <laughs> New Jersey devil, uh, Airbnb for the treehouse. That would be, <laughs> that would be a, an interesting thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. Jerome, um, Jerome Naranjo has asked if there's any plans for bus camping. Oh yeah. Uh, the bus right now, and maybe somebody can answer this. Um, but with the bus, I'm finding it handles horribly. So it like, like I'm driving and you know, like a bus, right? Like it, moving the big steering wheel, but it suddenly starts to like drift on me. So like, and then I, I go to correct it and then it overcorrects and like to the person behind the bus, it would look like I was intoxicated uh, trying to just keep this thing on the road. I don't know if that's normal for a school bus, but I've never seen any of the other ones doing it. And you think they would be easier to drive with all these children in them. You think they would make them stay in the lane pretty easily. So on this bus, I've had an alignment done like on all four wheels and there isn't play like when the when the car stopped it's not like there's play in the steering wheel so i'm not sure what's going on there and i will i will have that looked at but before i go too far um like a beautiful wife was going to be driving it or you know kind of learning to drive it because it's one of the bigger things that she's drove and it, at this point it's a little too iffy um i don't want to get dropped off and then have her go down the highway and then like it's it's hard enough with all the hours I've got on the bus to keep it on the road. So the bus, it will happen. And we're going to get a lot of, um, a lot of solar on there. I want to really push the solar aspect because the bus has a lot of roof and generators are really loud. Um, let's see. Let's see. Blaine, uh, Blaine Solhouse says, um, have you ever considered forestry trunk road just north of the pass? Um, we have done, like the Alberta Highway 40 forestry trunk road um, last year in the bus, if that's what you're referring to. Um, I'm not sure which pass you may mean, though. But um, it's... Well, Jason, probably have worn out steering ball joints. That's the type of answer I was looking for. Doesn't sound overly expensive. Your steering wheel shaft from the steering wheel to the gearbox. Well, thank you. Um Let's see. It's uh, I I do try to answer all the questions I can. I and I don't I don't pick and choose. I don't cherry pick the easy ones. I'll take some hard questions too. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I just uh, bespoke says. Uh, have you heard of steering issues called crabbing? I have not. Um, it's let me see. Uh, just uh, reading through to see what else. That's prime time to take a. Sip of beverage. Hmm. Yum. <clears throat> okay, so 
Evil Bananas asked, here's a, here's a tough one because it's a tough question. Um, and I'll take those. Will you ever do a collab with Joe Robinette? I don't think I'm really in the business for collabs is this channel. Um, there are too many things between different YouTubers that get, you know, there's, there's heated drama. There's, there's conflicts. I, I don't want some, I don't want some, uh, daytime, uh, drama series unfolding because people are very opinionated about their, in their favorite YouTubers or who they may all feel is authentic or not, or, you know, people do have, people do have, uh, very opinionated thoughts. And even on my channel, when the thoughts of doing a collab, when, you know, I've done one with like Forrest DeForest, that's the only person I've met up with because he's about as, you know, one, I like his videos. So like, I'm a fan of his and two, um, he is genuinely like the most non-controversial guy out there. <laughs> And any of the others where a collab has been floated past me or somebody has got the idea, and that's not just for, it's nobody in specific, but there's been four or five that these have come up in discussions and people have said, do not, you know, stay away from them. Don't do this. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to avoid the whole follow acts. If, um, if there's somebody is, is, you know, harmless or like, you know, like some little channel, I don't care. They don't have to be like a million subscriber channel i'll do a collab with somebody with 50 subs um anyway okay so let's see tx vet i'm guessing that's texas vet has asked which season is the most challenging for you to camp in well they all have their own challenges i would say for stealth camping the most challenging one would be early spring because you still have very cold nights uh, there's no leaves on the trees yet, at least where I live. And it's, you know, you're exhausted because you've been camping every week or all winter or trying to camp every week for the entire winter. So, uh, that's the trickiest for stealth. The trickiest for just regular camping, it's a toss up between winter and summer. And that's for me because I like it nice and cool. I like it, you know, 15 degrees Celsius. If it was like 60 Fahrenheit or something like that, I would be fine all day long. Just something I can put on a little jacket on and that's perfect. But in the summer, I have a heck of a time trying to stay cool when it's, you know, 30 degrees. I'm hiding in the bushes and there's no breeze. You know, there's this uh, stealth camping in um, the abandoned campground last summer. It was around this time of year, I think. And I was just like drenched in sweat. Like it's, it looked disgusting, <laughs> but it was, there's nothing I could do. And winter, of course, it's staying warm is the issue. So it's equally hard to stay warm as, as cool, but at least with warmth, I can pile on a million blankets, but there's in the summer, you need AC or fan or something like that. And uh, so that's, that's the tricky aspect of that. Let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to try to pick another thing at random here. Uh, this is like really has nothing to do with anything. Um, have you watched the new Top Gun yet? I haven't. Um, I really have to catch up on movies. I'm going to have like a movie night. Um, and my friends always bug me. This is a little known fact of Steve. I haven't seen it. Like any movie you're going to bring up. I haven't seen it. Star Wars. Some of it, I tried to get into it, but most of it haven't seen it. Uh, superhero movies, haven't seen them. Um, like you name, like the the movie that everybody's seen, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's a really obscure movie, I've seen it. You know, like little Waiting for Guffman poster behind me or the documentary Carts of Darkness about homelessness. You know, I've seen all of that. Never Cry Wolf, uh, the Disney adaptation of the Farley Mowat novel. I've seen those. But for, uh, you know, like, you know, Top Gun, it's, I, I may have seen it, but it's, uh, there's, there's the little secret. I haven't seen it. Um, Big Lebowski I've seen. Okay. Now, okay. Well, here's, here comes some with some, actually, we're going to say, has Steve seen it? Because there's a few that I, that I can just say yes or no. All right. All right. All right. So, Pee Wee Goes Camping. I haven't seen it. Um, let's see. Guffman. Yeah, I've seen that. Star Wars. I haven't seen it. Um, let's see. 
<laughs> Shawshank Redemption. I've seen that. I like that movie. Uh, Beautiful Wife is not a fan of it. Um, Super Troopers. Yes, um, I saw it. I saw the sequel too. Um, I like the original. Let's see. Let's see. Who else? Clerks. Yes, I've seen Clerks and Clerks 2. Um, have not seen Clockwork Orange. Have not seen Spaceballs. Have not seen Halloween. Have not seen Ghostbusters. Have not seen The Crow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Have not seen The Burbs. Have not seen UHF. Um, the Edge, I think I did see a great outdoors movie. I do believe I've seen that. Um, but yeah, Grizzly Man, I've seen that. I've seen Goodfellas, never seen it. Scary movie I did see, but uh, yeah, like, uh, okay, so yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, haven't seen it. Um, oh, somebody suggested an adult titled movie, but no, I haven't seen it. Um, and keep things PG. That was like one of the first things on those guys. Keep PG. Um, Jaws, haven't seen it. The Thing, haven't seen it. Full Metal Jacket, haven't seen it. Smoking the Bandit, I've seen. The book was better. Uh, I'm kidding. There clearly was no book of Smokey and the Bandit. But, all right, we're not, we're not, we're not going to run out the clock uh, saying, have I seen it or not? Because uh, I probably haven't. Um, let me see. Saving Pride Ryan, I did see. Back to the Future, I did see. You know, there, there's some classic ones. Animal House, yes, I did see. But uh, Spinal Tap, yes, yeah, Spinal Tap was good. We're just having fun with this. <laughs> Caddyshack was great. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, okay, yes, Jurassic Park. Everybody's seen Jurassic Park. But the, the thing is that a lot of movies, people seem to think that I that everybody should have seen. That's Forrest Gump I've seen. Uh, yeah, but there's tons of movies that everybody has seen, and there's all these references of these movies. Like, I think I just saw Planet of the Apes for, like, the first time last year at some, at some point. Uh, Okay, well let's get off, let's get off that. What movie have I seen? Yes, Blues, Bro Blues Brothers was uh, great. That's that is classic. Um, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd. But uh, anyway, that was like the weirdest tangent I've ever gone on to on a live stream, and we spent like five minutes um, <laughs> going over which movies I've seen. Uh, diesel heaters, diesel heaters, diesel heaters. Um, used trio has asked about diesel heaters. I think the question is, am I going to use a diesel heater in the bus? That answer is yes. That is the only real way to heat the thing in the winter. And I still haven't tested it out in the winter on the rough terrain roads covered in snow. Like I know it, it must work because kids go to school in these things, right? They get the bus drives right through the snow all the way to school. Unless it's a snow day and they cancel the buses. So yes, there will be a diesel heater because I've already got diesel in the bus. Oh, okay. Now... Chris Baldwin has suggested that I camp in some strange area. I think I can uh, do that. That is a very good idea. And I'm going to do my best effort to do that. Um, now, it looks like Rachel Harris asked about wood stove. Or I think um, it just scrolled past a little bit. Um, the wood stove, um, the one I got is really heavy. That's going to find like a permanent home somewhere, uh, probably in the, like, the tree house or in another little shack somewhere because it's big and heavy. It's the Camp Chef wood stove, the one they sell at Cabela's, the, you know, the humongous heavy. It's going to outlast me, right? Like it'll outlast, you know, if I had grandchildren, this thing would be passed down through history. It's so big and heavy and overbuilt. But that doesn't work for packing it up every week and moving it somewhere else. So um, I'm going to get a smaller one. Uh, I'm looking for something uh, that has replaceable flue pipes because I've used this, the, the other wood stove I've used hundreds of times. And, uh, you know, including eight weeks when I was camping throughout the winter going to school, uh, which I did pass that that course, by the way. So uh, those, those galvanized... Uh, I, I'm sure they shouldn't be galvanized for a flu pipe. Uh, that, that stuff's pretty toxic when it burns. But uh, those telescopic ones that fold up all inside of each other, they come in like, you know, 18-inch segments. You can build your own little stovepipe. Those always corrode really easy, and they're, they're impossible to find replacements for. So 
I will. Oh, here's one. Uh, Ask Jack CC has says, have you ever train hopped? <clears throat> you know, I think I have to, I had to answer this one because I had a dream last night that I train hopped and that I got busted. Um, it, like we were, we were running. Um, we, we pulled into a yard. I, I will say I've never train hopped for those who are curious. It's that's a young man's game and it's a dangerous game. And, you know, I, I do follow a few other, um, a, a few other people that do the rail rail hopping uh, and, you know, f famously stove the hobo used to do that. I'm a big fan of the work he did. Um, and I don't know, it just, just is so dangerous. Um, but I would love to, it's something I fantasize about jumping on a train and seeing where it goes. Um, okay. Oh, well, let's see. Kasam Hamzi asks, who's your favorite trailer park boy? It's gotta be bubbles. Um, gotta be, gotta be bubbles. Uh, let's see. Scout trooper. Do you shop online or in store? A combination of both. And I don't know if this is like a Canadian thing or a smaller town thing. Uh, but what I find is it's hard to get a lot of specific camping gear in store here. Um, that may be different in various other larger cities, like, but Edmonton's like a city of a million people, basically. Uh, so there should be like a lot of stuff here, but uh, I think there's just different stuff available in Canada, US. But the the places I go here looking for um, looking for very specific camping things, like you'd think a camel tent, you should be able to find somewhere. But no, um, I end up on, you know, Amazon or looking online. So that's, I do a combination. I, I shop in store when I can, uh, but sometimes I have to um, go searching. Okay, now let's see. Uh, Ran, am I gonna pick another comment or question? Um, let me see, something that I have not answered. All right, okay, now here's one. Just because I know a little bit about this. <clears throat> Propane versus butane versus isobutane. So I'm a gas fitter by trade, so I'm qualified to speak on this stuff, um, despite uh, the fact that I lit a stove like on fire and ended up throwing it in a frantic panic. I should have known better. However, propane, it vaporizes right down to about minus 40 Fahrenheit and Celsius. They both line up there. So uh, propane, it has... You know, they have comparable energy densities. Your, uh, this is just turning into a boring gas fitting lecture, but uh, your butane has about mm, 3,200 uh, BTU per uh, cubic foot of vapor. Your propane is at about 2,500 BTU per cubic foot of vapor. So there is more energy in the butane, but butane, if it's around freezing or zero degrees Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, it will not produce any pressure. So you got to warm it up It's the same. That's what's in a cigarette lighter. So when, if a lighter's not working for you, you got to warm it up. That's why. And isobutane um, is just, it's a different, it's a different form of butane. It's still got the same chemical uh, elements. You know, it's, it's still the same. Uh, what is it? C, C3H8 uh, is what the butane is, but the, this is just getting way too geeky. Okay, uh, but the butane is, they're, they're just arranged differently and I believe it has a lower uh, point of vaporization. So anyways, uh, then there are mixes of butane and propane that are used in those little camp stoves. But okay, I would say use propane if you can. Those little hiking butane ones, they're designed to be ultra light for those people that are shaving down every gram or fraction of an ounce. Uh, those are what you use, but for the type of camping I do, Propane is what I would bring. Um, okay, that was just a really um, unnecessary, a really unnecessary uh, explanation of uh, of gas. You know, here's here's something just completely different. Um, Stephanie, oh, okay, don't scroll on me. Don't scroll on me. Stephanie Pinkney, uh, do I like to pair cheese with my step two? Oh yes. Who does not like cheese? I once did like a beer and cheese diet and uh, it was, I was like fairly young and fairly broke 
And the reason I did it was because I found a really good price on a log of medium cheddar and a really good price on beer. Now, I know that's not the healthiest thing, but um, I woke up surprisingly refreshed and energetic for the first couple of days um, on that. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Do I like popcorn? I can't pronounce some of these uh, YouTube names. Or... Orgazor Sans. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you the popcorn I like. I got this. There it is. Okay, this stuff. Now, this is a popcorn. Uh, this Harlan's stuff. It's It's got all these components in this pouch. This is what they use at those, like, self-popping things. This, this is for, like, an 8-ounce popcorn machine, a big thing from the hardware store. Uh, but it's got your flavor in there. That's Flavacol is what it's called. You got your kernels and then you got your like coconut oil in there. So that all goes together. I don't do the hot air popper stuff. Hey, garbage, you coming by for a visit? Yeah, 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 there you are. Say hi to everybody. So that's the stuff. And that's, oh, there goes garbage. So that's the, that's the popcorn I use. I'll endorse that one for sure. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, garbage. He wants a treat. Uh, garbage just about 14 more minutes, so then we'll get you a treat and we'll watch the game. Um, oh, okay, here, Tim Parker's asked a really good one. Do I ever miss or long for the RVing days, the RV living days? And, you know, I would say not really, but yes. Um, when I did my trip to BC originally, uh, the one I tried to in the fall when the roads washed out and I couldn't get there. And then I ended up kind of stuck there debating on, you know, am I going to go the super long way around or are the roads going to open? Do I just, you know, hold on and wait a little bit? I was there by myself and, you know, I got like kind of camping set up and I was lonely. Um, I've gotten used to having a beautiful wife with me. So it's on that trip, I was like, you know, I don't know how happy I would be back in an RV right now. Uh, it's a young man's game, and maybe I've just been too domesticated right now. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you. But I do like, I, I think the channel would be easier to produce content for if I was full-time living. Because I'm unique among kind of a little, this this little group of strange YouTube channels. Because... You know, you got Foresty Forest. He's actually full time, like living in his van, um, and you know he's generally single. I think he's maybe had a girlfriend or two here or there, but he is like kind of devoted, like his life to doing what he loves and filming it. And then you know you got Mav out there, and he's just kind of like out there, you know, full time. Like it's I being a husband is also part of my life, uh, just as much as YouTube, actually more. Uh, so I do what I can, and the RV days, I think it's a young man's game, uh, but that's my opinion. It's, I can't see myself being, you know, 60, 70 years old, um, unless you got a really nice RV setup, then it's different, but I'm thinking about the old leaky one I had. So uh, that's, uh, that's that. Oh, no, here's one. Um, I was just Ron Zellers. Um, I was I was just talking with beautiful wife about this the other day, and I was like, you know, I feel bad that I've I haven't been putting in the videos I wanted to on the Step Two channel. It's you know, I get focused on like the main channel, and it's like all the effort goes into hunting around trying to find you know a perfect spot for a really cool stealth video or somewhere interesting to camp for the night. And then I, I always kind of think, well, I need to get caught up on that main channel before I go out and I film, you know, a step two about, you know, day in the life of what I do looking for a spot to camp. But I should be doing it the other way um, because I cook a meal every night and I'm like, you know, why can't I do that? Uh, you could get to sit here and chat with you guys, visit, make a few jokes about when the food doesn't work out right. Maybe something catches on fire, something spills all over the place. I put in too much cheese. You know how it goes. And that type of thing I could do, like, 
every day. I'm out there. I, I got to cook a meal every day. Why not film it? So yeah, uh, cooking with Steve is, I, I'm going to try to get that back in the step two channel because I got to cook every day. Um, anybody planning to watch a hockey game after this? They don't drop a puck until like 20 minutes after. And, you know, the pregame, they're going to talk about, you know, the players and all that. So let me see if uh, oh, yes, somebody is cheering for Lightning. Somebody's cheering for the Oilers. Yeah. It's a. Uh... Oh, Carlos asked who's playing. Well, Edmonton Oilers. And Colorado Avalanche tonight is the game that I will be following. I don't know if the other guys are playing tonight, too. I don't think they do that. Like, the West, Eastern and Western are both on the same time, same night. Uh, that would be way too much hockey to watch. I'm sure they want you to watch everybody. Um, they want you to watch all those teams. I bet you they all want them all to go to Game 7, too, because then every stadium is packed all the time. Let me see. Oh, there's this. Cody Rogers says Avalanche wins tonight. That's kind of what the odds are saying. Um, I <laughs> Everybody's going to like disown me from Edmonton. But um, uh, Dave, our carpenter at the acreage, who's working out there. If you've seen in the last video, there's like a little camper there. He's living out there and, you know, just working on the house. He's semi-retired. Really good guy. But, uh, you know, he, he said, you know, he'd bet 10 bucks that the Oilers would win. And I said, you know, I'll take that uh, just because I saw the odds. And I was like, okay, you know, I can't turn that down like a one-to-one -one odds on $10 bet. So that was my legal sports betting of the week. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Wilmer Man, the fam, is, says, do I watch Van City Van Life? You know, I try to. Um, I, I don't watch a whole lot of other YouTubers that are, like, in my wheelhouse. You know, like, if, if the outdoor things... Um, I, I, I try to keep up and I, I, I step in here and there, but I, I really don't want to be influenced. Like I don't want to inadvertently copy an idea from them or at the same time, I don't want to be, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see them doing something. I was thinking of doing something similar and then just kind of like give up on it because, you know, I, I'm in like neck and neck with the uh, corporal's corner. He's had a few that have come out uh, where he's, done an idea that I was like about to do or had planned to do within the next couple of weeks, you know, like a cardboard shelter for uh, something or, you know, an emergency shelter under a picnic table. And th those are all things that I'd planned to do. And then I see him do it. I'm like, ah, oh, rats, you know, I don't, I don't want to come off as, you know, somebody that's so desperate for content. I just go copy anybody, uh, all these other channels. So let's see. Um, Let's see, what what can I... Writer's Block has asked, have you ever considered stealth camping overseas? Yes, but I, I'm really scared of flying and I don't like heights. But I've heard that, you know, there's... like I think Scotland is like wild camp wherever you want. You don't even have to be stealthy. You're allowed to do it. Um, there's... I, I wouldn't want to get into serious trouble because I know that, you know... Tennessee apparently has now made it a felony to do stealth camping. Um, so there, I really have to do my research. You know, I don't want to get to some country with completely different laws and just be some ignorant North American that's just going in like thought I could camp here because I don't want to. I don't want to just use other countries as my you know recreationally legal camping playground. Um, uh, U.S. for camping at, yes, uh, CD's box, uh, CD's Xbox. Um, yeah, I, I probably will make, make my way into the States. Uh, that's for sure. I don't even have a passport, and there's a huge wait list for those right now, too. So um, getting a passport, uh, it would be the first priority. And then maybe I've watched too much, like, border security shows and all that, but I'm also half paranoid that, like, I'll be driving across in the bus and then they'll rip the whole bus apart and pull off the solar panels and leave me like with a dismantled bus. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I just watch too much uh, junk TV about that type of dramatic stuff. Let's see. <clears throat> mm. 
let me see. It's Alan Monroe has said, if you're Canadian, you can come to Louisiana without a passport. I don't know. I thought it was like like <clears throat> U.S. border. Like I didn't know if states could set their own uh, requirements for passports or not. I thought it was like a federal thing that came in after um, 9-11. There's um, somebody's asked. <laughs> oh, okay. If stealth camping is illegal, I didn't I didn't see who exactly that was, but they're asking if stealth camping is illegal. All depends. Some places like Tennessee, yes, a felony, as a matter of fact, not even a fine. Um, uh, and then other places, no, it's it's allowed. Like here, we're in a gray area here because it's uh, it's technically not something I should do in a city park, but it's also such a small unenforced like it's a small fine that's really unenforced um so it's kind of like you know jaywalking maybe the dog's off a leash uh like kind of a minor thing like that um and i haven't had an issue yet i've had actual um peace officers uh who have followed the channel park rangers that <laughs> i was in a park once and uh i i wasn't planning a stealth camp i was just i was looking for somebody that was working at that park that i knew and you know, then I see a conservation officer pull up, uh, which is like our park rangers and Canada conservation officers. And um, he rolls down his window right away because I was in a section of the park uh, looking for somebody who works there that is kind of like a staff only area. And he, I, I, I said right away, oh, I'm looking for so-and-so, right? And he's like, oh, no, I don't think he's here right now. Then he looks at me and he says, but I know who you are. And I said, oh, okay, <laughs> uh, don't worry. Uh, I'm not up to anything. It's not going to be any of that stuff you see on YouTube. I'm just here to go meet my friend. And he laughed a little and he said uh, he was impressed with the amount of views that uh, things were getting. So it's, that was my, my one experience with an actual park ranger that recognized me right off the bat when I was <laughs> driving around in a park in the area that I should not be in the park. Um, uh, Steve, do I have a tattoo? And if so, it's are they cool? Asks Melanie. Melanie Jewel. I do have a tattoo. It is not cool. Um, I got it when I was like 15 years old. And there it is. That's my tattoo. Is it a safety pin? Is it a 69? What type of a tattoo would a 15-year-old boy get? I don't know. You tell me. It's abstract. I have no idea what it is. But it was made in somebody's basement with like a part out of a uh, remote control car and a needle and a vial of ink. So that's, uh, that's the tattoo um, that my lot in life is now that I've ended up with. Um, let me see. Um, <clears throat> now this, I'm just gonna answer this. Uh, Jace Bryan has asked, What's the strangest thing that you've experienced while stealth camping that you couldn't explain? I gotta say, um, with stealth camping, nothing. Uh, there's nothing that I experienced that was paranormal or freaky or scary or that I couldn't explain or that I needed to. Um, there was once when I was boondocking, which is different than stealth camping, uh, there was something in the night, like I was in an abandoned campground. It was completely empty, just me. And yes, there were a couple of times that something had banged on the side of the motorhome. That I couldn't explain. Um, but I did mention that in another video, and people have suggested that, you know, expansion, you know, if, if there's a heater on or something, could have been the case. But yeah, there was like sometimes, sometimes you can get dive bombed by owls, but there was no trees, no nests, no branches. It was like me in this big open thing, in this big open place where something smack in the side of the, uh, the R the RV, and uh, let's see, hoax hotel, swamp gas. What does that even mean? Um, I know what swamp gas is. That's like H two S. Oh, maybe you're thinking about the uh, the uh, the sound in the RV. Hey, weed in the bush. Hey, hidden hammock. Hey, it's the stealth camping alliance in here. Right on. It's uh, the stealth camping alliance. There's uh, there's a uh, there's a group there that's are doing some new um. Uh, some new stealth camping videos because, you know, we can't have enough stealth campers out there. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, 
Okay. Okay. Riley, Riley Tate, this is kind of just a, you know, a Steve trivia question, I guess. Um, favorite kind of bread for a good slice uh, of toast? Um, and do you still have that industrial toaster? Um, my favorite would be, favorite for toast would be a light rye. Uh, either a Winnipeg rye or maybe a marble rye. Nothing too aggressive, nothing like a pumpernickel. But, uh, and yes, I do have that toaster. It's, um, let's see. Let's see. Julian Cardi Studios, 11 years old, and just recently started a channel of his own. He's about to drop a new solo campout vid. Maybe a sub? Well, maybe let's pin that message. Because I haven't checked his channel, but I'm going to. And uh, let's see, he's calling me. Oh, it's Abby. He's a moderator. He's probably saying the game's on. What are you doing? Maybe he wants to go on the live stream. Hold on a second. Hello? Hello? Uh, Mr. Mr. Steve, how are you today? Uh, I'm good. You're on the live stream. What's up? Yeah. What, what's going on? How are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, You're supposed to be moderating this okay. live stream. Right on. Yeah, I'm uh, working hard here. For you. <laughs> so you're watching the live stream, right? You know I'm... Yeah, it's also... Uh... I know, but the puck the puck doesn't drop for another, like another fifteen minutes or so, right? Puck, puck doesn't drop. Are you watching it on another TV? Okay. Well, you're gonna have to sub to this Julian. Okay, you just gonna watch the game now. All right. That explains it. Okay. So the game's on. Uh, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you after I'm done the live stream. Come on. <laughs> People call me in the middle of a live stream, but uh, yeah, he says the game is on. Um, yeah, let's see if we can uh, uh, check out Julian Cardi Studios um, for first uh, uh, overnight camping video. It's gonna be great. So, um, <laughs> worst mod ever. Uh, oh, Katrina S, slow the chat. I can't. Um, I can do slow mode, but I can't slow down the scrolling of it. That is as slow as it will go. If there's if there's that many people commenting, um, there there's no setting. Uh, my my slow mode is on. I can only stop one person from doing a bunch of messages in a row. Uh, it makes them wait like a minute in between uh, videos. So, okay. <laughs> oh my. Okay. I am going to turn on the hockey game right now. Um, thank you to everybody who has come by for this strange, um, unusual live stream where nothing happened other than me sitting here drinking beer and uh, and showed you some popcorn. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, and uh, <laughs> let's see who wins this hockey game. Uh, how about... Let's see. Uh, we'll see. It's it, it's still young in the series, right? Like there's still like could be six more games. There's no way to know what's going to happen. So uh, cheers, everybody. Thank you for stopping in. And yeah, got to watch the game. Uh, hunker down, everybody. And uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated on exactly what's going on here. Um, cheers. Until then, stay stealthy, my friends.